So, on the morning of September the 11th, I was uh, able to, I walked to work, it was only 22 blocks, uh, a lovely house uh, in Washington, and um, it was a beautiful, absolutely magnificent fall day, not unlike this one is at the moment. And, um, and hardly fall in Washington, um, because of course it's much later summer there, but um, I was working away on a, on a uh, we call them briefing books, they were about this thick. Every meeting had seven components, and you had to have who was coming, and their backgrounds, and, and a biography on the principal visitor, and then the talking points, what the issues were, the bilateral issues. And a young fellow who was some sort of intern or young something or other came into the office, into my office, and said, an airplane has just run into a skyscraper in New York City. And I said, oh, for heaven's sakes, that happened in the 30s once. I remember reading about it in the Life magazine. And, uh, and I said, I'm really in the middle of this. And, and, and so I, sort of dis I was very dismissive about this. Uh, plus, he was so low on the totem pole, I didn't figure he knew anything. But uh, I'm banging away, and he comes back and says, another plane just hit the same building, and I came right up out of my chair. It was very clear to people in the FBI and CIA that there was this growing base of, of boiling discontent um, in, among the terrorist types that something was bound to break through and, and somebody was going to get, get um, attacked. Something would get attacked. So um, then it all began to unfold with, is it surprising how many people had little television sets under their desks and things? I, I never did, but pretty soon everyone is clustered around and pretty soon, you know, more and more and more of this. And, and so by about one in the afternoon, they're trying to get everybody out of the federal buildings. And um, then they were, but then some people had to hang around to do basic things. And that, I don't know, I, by this time I was so kind of passive about it. I, it hit the Pentagon and crashed into the ground, and there were pictures of, of some flames, but the Pentagon was so vast, this seemed to be, it just didn't hit me as so staggeringly awful as the pictures coming out of New York. And it seemed to be kind of a, an end run or something. It didn't... It never once did I in any way feel personally threatened or in any kind of danger. I don't know what that was all about. But it seemed to me that it was, it was over when it, when they, uh, I guess it was because the plane going down in Pennsylvania seemed to be a failure, you know, on their part and that was sort of a fizzle, the fizzling end of it, I think. But I also knew I couldn't get home, no public transportation was working and they, I, the, the, my office was, and my home had the Capitol building in between them. So in order to get home, I was going to have to walk, they had it circ squared off about three miles away. So I figured they'd lift that before too long, and so I was quite happy to stay. But it was all terribly quiet, and, and actually manning the phones and worrying about anything. Literally nothing else happened, and hardly anybody rang the Attorney General to ask any questions. Or they, the calls were stopped before they got there. Um, so it was very, very quiet. And I walked home about sunset and still had to walk halfway to Kingdom Come to get uh, Pennsylvania Avenue was closed all the way across. But to be frank, our policy in the Middle East has always been uh, of great irritation to one billion people. And so I'm not sure that I was surprised that it happened or that I could that I could become violently crazed by the fact that these people um, had done something that they thought was fair in their estimation and so I would have hoped that the one thing we could have learned from the attack is that we now have to start dealing with what we refer to as the Islamic Ark it's a large uh, semicircle from, you know, sub-Saharan Africa along the southern Mediterranean through the Middle East and down to Indonesia are 1.4 billion Islamist uh, believers. And in the middle of that is our policy 
uh, regarding the Palestinians and the, the Palestinian Jewish issue. And um, we have never found a policy that they thought was in any way fair. So I thought it was, while astonishingly catastrophic, that it was neither unexpected or is it, was it difficult to understand why? And I'm not sure that a lot of other Americans didn't understand it as well, but it was not appropriate to speak about it at the time. I mean, it's so easy to take the chauvinistic, jingoistic approach that we ought to get out there and you know, kill them back. But it's, it's just going to have to be a political solution. I had thought from the beginning that it needed to be a political solution. And of course, the thing that has changed is the electronic age. These, these, the, the Islamic community is now not just a bunch of you know, small villages that are still in the coming, you know, still cooking around a fire. They're on the internet, they're on their telephones, they're very sophisticated, and, and that changes the paradigm considerably, I think. We haven't resolved the anger in any way in the last ten years. Who's oh, anger? The the uh, the Islamic Arc A R C. In fact, of course, we've increased it, but well, I would call it a wake-up call for the fact that it was time to to revisit earlier foreign policy misjudgments. Among them, the attention we needed to pay to the Arab countries or the, uh, or the Islamic countries in our bilateral, bilateral trade agreements and in, in having and in taking them seriously as, uh, as tra trading partners and, and, and as nation states. Because we really did ignore them uh, during the Cold War. And, uh, and we do so at our peril or did so at our peril, and we need to bring them into the campfire, or whatever that phrase is. Bring them into the, bring them to the table. The Arab Spring, I think, is one of the more hopeful things that has come along in a long time, and that is the answer, that there are still hearts and minds in the Islamic arena that want to have uh, a real serious, have good life in this, in this life of ours.